it's a different game being in show business. I'm used to, you know, st- nothing wrong with studios and networks. Of course I have to say that, <laughs> but there's <laughs> nothing wrong with studios and networks. Um, but traditionally it's not been like a participatory endeavor. It's like you get a fee, you show up and, uh, you, you basically are part of the meal. <laughs> you know, you, you get served on the table and you're consumed and you're happy for the opportunity to be consumed. But anything that's sort of, and this might sound like a joke, but Tyler Perry eyes is it, meaning Tyler Perry flipped all that and started buying studios and producing his own stuff. NFT seems more like a reasonable way uh, for artists and other people to get involved in the whole process instead of just being the camera person or just being the, ca- uh, the lighting person or just being the comedian. So that was interesting to me, although I'm still not entirely sure, like, this is a non-fungible show. I guess every other show I was doing was fungible and has already been funged. That's all I, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, um, Pete, what was your entry point into the NFT space? What was your first exposure? I heard, I mean, like a lot of people, I just heard people were buying Pharrell's first tweet or something. And I, I did find it sort of philosophically interesting, meaning all ownership is is a conceit, you know, sort of like, time or money. These are all just sort of agreed upon illusions. They're not really real. So extending that into a digital space wasn't as absurd as it might be for maybe my mom, who really has absolutely no, not only no understanding, but no respect for what's going on. I thought it was a creative approach to ownership and an interesting and creative, again, creative, creative, creative twist on how can we play with the energy of ownership and how can we Uh, revitalize it a little bit. Even though obviously the comedy angle is like, I don't get it. What the hell is going on? I don't understand the stock market. I don't understand legal tender. Like it's nothing new (laughs) for things to not be understood by me. So if somebody wants to buy a tweet or buy this performance, although I will say this performance being something that you could buy and then air and then profit off of the airing, that makes it a little bit more clear. I don't know what the guy who owns Pharrell's first tweet is going to do if he's going to have showings or let me touch it, (laughs) you know, that's, that's less clear to me. My hope is this, this might sound too lofty or maybe false, but it's like the reason why podcasts are, I think a phenomenon is because entertainment is relational. Like I'm watching Ted Lasso right now, right? Everybody's watching Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso shows up in your house on Friday. He's a guest in your home. That show becomes a guest in your home. And that is a relationship. It's parasocial. Ted Ted Lasso doesn't know he has a relationship with you. Podcasters don't know they have a relationship with you. But it's sort of like a synthetic, and that doesn't mean bad. It's an artificial, and that doesn't mean bad, uh, relationship. It, it gives you some of the nutrition of a, of a real life human relationship. They stream right into your ears. That's very intimate. Like it's just you and your friends. And they show up on a regular basis. Whereas stand-ups before podcasts used to just like, might have a special every couple years or might have a guest appearance on some TV show or might have a new show. It's erratic. What's that? That's a bad relationship. That's like a, a drunk dad or something. Like <laughs> where's, where's drunk dad? Like, oh, I guess he taped something in Vegas that we can watch. That's not a good relationship. So a podcast says, hey, I'll meet you every Wednesday. I'll meet you every Friday. So now we have a relationship. So one of the potentials I see with NFTs, hopefully in, in success would be now you can be a participate, a new, a new way to participate in this relationship. You can be the owner of this piece because, you know, we watch autographs become photographs, right? It used to be, will you sign my autograph book? And now nobody wants an autograph, it, even older people, nobody wants an autograph. They want a photograph and maybe and I, I'll leave this to the the Philip K. Dicks out there. Like, I don't know what the future is going to be, but there's a possibility that NFTs, I think, are going to play a part in that. 